Good evening, and welcome to this, our first midweek Advent service. It's great to have all of you gathered here as we continue our preparations, preparing our hearts for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but more importantly, preparing our hearts and our lives for the second coming when he will come back for all of his children. We follow our order of service that is printed out for us um, and is also up on the overhead, and we begin with our opening hymn, Arise, O Christian People. We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, enlightened our darkness by the light of your Christ. 
May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing our response verses. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9. This is also the text for our meditation tonight. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you and your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. We speak together Luther's explanation to the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. We join in singing, Come Thou Precious Ransom, Come.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation comes from our Isaiah reading. We'll read it one more time here before we get into the sermon. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have long, been, long time been, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is our text, dear friends in Christ. Three days ago, we gathered here in the sanctuary of Mount Olive Lutheran Church in the presence of God on that first Sunday in Advent, beginning a whole new church year for the church. And at the same time, as we begin to prepare for the celebration of the festival of the Holy Incarnation, we prepare for that coming then of Jesus Christ on that first Christmas day. In last Sunday's gospel, we heard the account of our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. This is how the church year begins each and every year. We stand between our Lord's first coming and we wait for his second coming at the end of time. We wait and we live by faith, not by sight. The faithful who came before us in the days of the prophet Isaiah then also lived by faith as they waited for the long-expected Messiah. In Isaiah 64, the prophet gives us an inspired prayer. It is a prayer of great comfort expressing the longings of God's people during a disastrous years when the Babylonian army had conquered the land. They came in and they destroyed all of Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple. And those who were not slaughtered in the siege when it took place, they were taken away in chains to Babylon to be in captivity. But this prayer is not limited to those dark days. It's also the prayer of the church of all times whenever she is surrounded by God's enemies and when all appears very hopeless. It is also our prayer. So with Isaiah, we pray as we await our Lord and we live by faith. From our text then, verse one, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. God who created the world by the power of his spoken word alone has not left us on our own while he watches dispassionately disconnected or detached from a distance. He has not left us. In difficult times, it may seem that God has forgotten us, but he hasn't. And nevertheless, when those times come along in our lives, in faith we pray and we wait, praying Isaiah's Advent prayer, oh, that the word, you would rend the heavens and you would come down and you would rescue us from our enemies. It's a prayer of the longing of God's presence among us, each and every one. It's a frightening thing to, to ask Almighty God to come down in judgment. Even if even the, the mountains quake and melt, as it says in verse four, how much worse is it gonna be then for a sinner? Nevertheless, we pray these words knowing full well the consequences for each and every one of us. What a vivid picture Isaiah gives us in this text and in this prayer. I know you've seen on the news over the last number of years, we've seen the pictures of the wildfires. They're so hot, those wildfires are, so hot that, that dry bushes and dry trees, they just burst and explode into flames. When fire heats water, it turns to vapor and it vanishes. It vanishes out into the air. And so it is with those who oppress us. We want them to 
simply go away. We want them to vanish and we want them to leave, leave us like a mist and leave us all alone and leave us in peace. But we don't want to merely pray for the destruction of our enemies by fire. We pray in verse two, come down to make your name known to your adversaries and cause the nations to tremble at your presence. Where the Lord's name is, guess what? He's there. In his presence, the mountains tremble. He's there. The word Isaiah uses for tremble literally means to flow. It's thus a picture of rock turning into liquid and flowing away, and it describes how the presence of God will change the rock-hard hearts of the ungodly. Such is the way of God's judgment, the way of the law for all people. Our prayer is that this God would save us from our enemies, but also that all nations, and including our nation, will repent and call upon the name of the Lord for forgiveness for their sins. It's often said, and you've probably heard this, be careful what you pray for. It's a dangerous thing to ask God to come down in judgment on all the nations, for guess what? He will judge us too because we're included in all of that. So the focus of Isaiah's prayer turns from Israel enemies then to the church itself, to the enemy within each and every one of us. As God's people come into the presence of the Lord, their sins are made manifest and prayer becomes a confession then of our sin and a plea for forgiveness. So we pray with Isaiah and all of Israel, you meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned, in our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. And Israel's prayer continues when you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. And the unexpected happened. The unexpected took place at the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. The glory of the Lord ripped open the heavens in the presence of the shepherds. The shepherds saw this, and the shepherds didn't melt away like molten rock, but they were told by the angel, as we hear in Luke 2, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The heavens were rent open, and he came down. The manner in which God came down was wonderfully unexpected in that he came down clothed in human flesh and blood. He came down as a humble little baby boy born in a manger. Through the miracle of the incarnation, this child, true God and true man who he was, came to bring salvation to all people and peace between God and people. In a real sense, we await with the Old Testament church. It is, of course, true that we live after the birth of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, we pray with and as those who went before us, we live and we wait and we pray by faith, not by sight. We hear what they heard. We listen to God's word from the prophet Isaiah. Their prayer for deliverance from God's enemies and the forgiveness of sins is our prayer also. Despite all of our righteousness being like filthy rags, we pray with them the great nevertheless of the gospel. Verse 8 and 9 from our text, But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. We dare to ask God to look upon us, for we are his children. Israel's prayer is our prayer. Oh, that you would rend down the heavens and come down, and the mountains might quake at your presence. 
Did God answer Isaiah's prayer way back then? Yes, he did. And he did it in a very powerful way. Babylon was destroyed by her enemies and a remnant of God's people was brought home to rebuild Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. But the full answer to this prayer took place many years later, many years later, when blood and water flowed from the eternal rock. The moment Jesus gave up his spirit, remember what, our, our, what the Bible tells us? The heavens were rent open and the mountains quake. Matthew 27 tells us, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened. So with Isaiah, we pray, as we await our Lord, and we live by faith. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus, our coming Lord and Savior. Amen. We join in singing the Magnificat, hymn 933. We stand. We speak our Kyrie together. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. Stir up your power, O Lord, and calm that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by the patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, because of your tender love toward us sinners, you have given us your Son, that, believing in him, we might have everlasting life. Continue to grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may remain steadfast in this faith to the end, and finally come to life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. And, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsel, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We remain standing to sing our final hymn, All Praise to Thee. Please be seated. Again, good evening to all of you. It's great to have you here um, this evening as we uh, begin our midweek celebrations here in plans and preparations. One brief announcement. This Sunday, Sunday the 10th, we continue with our second Sunday in Advent. After church service, immediately after, we'll take a brief break and we'll have our fourth, our quarterly voters meeting and we'll deal with, with the budget uh, and work on passing that budget with that voters meeting. So as you go about your walk with the Lord this week, we, we remember and we pray as the Israelites said, the Old Testament people, we wait and pray for our Lord to come. He's already come. We know that. We're celebrating his birth again, but we know he's coming again. So we prepare ourselves for his next coming. Have a great rest of the week with the Lord. I'll see you in the back.